they, the Mellons came up, Mrs. Mellon and her husband and two other Mellons, and they went into the Kena Lake in a PBY, and they had a bathtub, and they had a, a light plant, and in those days, the, the light plant was a Studebaker car engine with a, with a generator on it. So, you know, that, it probably weighed four to 500 pounds, you know, and, and, but they built a nice tent floor with a, put a big tent on for the melons, and I mean, it was, it was quite first class and they had lots of money. Well, about every three days they wanted their mail, and I would run up there with the, with the Vega. And so this, this went on for a couple of weeks. And close to the end, they had a request that they wanted me to bring enough gas so that I could, I could run over to Lake Atlin for them. So I ran over to Lake Atlin and with their, with they were out of booze and they wanted to restock their larder. But that was fine. The company got paid well for it. And uh, Mrs. Mellon gave me a uh, big chunk of back, of fan and back sheet strap and uh, they were, that's what they were, one of the things that they wanted to go there for was to hunt fat and sheep, which is, is, is a cross between a doll sheep and a stone sheep, but it'll revert one way or the other in time. You know, I guess it doesn't, it won't stay as a fat and sheep. Uh, they call them saddlebacks. But the meat was very, very good. Uh, uh, and when I went up there to, to clean up, when they were leaving, they, they went out in the PBY and there was, I picked up a bunch of garbage and stuff and all the Wranglers and the two guys were sitting around and they were drinking up all the alcohol and I said, what's going on? And they said, we are going to make sure this is all gone before we start the 400 miles back to Telegraph Creek. <laughs> so, I mean, that was the way to do it, I guess. So, uh, in 56, a lot, Coastal bought a helicopter, and they hired a, a man by the name of, of Sweeney, he was a nice enough guy, he was just getting out of the Coast Guard, and he'd been flying uh, albatrosses, and he'd also been flying helicopters a little, and they just inserted him in the seniority <coughs> list ahead of me, and I was supposed to be a Grumman Goose pilot that summer, and, and I, was only going to, I was going to get to fly 50 hours of the Goose rather than be a full-time Grumman Goose pilot. And it kind of made me mad, and I, I told a real old-time bush pilot named, named Sassine, I told him that I was thinking about going someplace else, and he wrote me a letter to Bill Borland at Reeve, whose dad was killed with Carl Bell Eilson, and he was the chief pilot for Reeves at the time, this is 1956. He also wrote me a letter to George Rayburn at, at Wayne, who was the head controller, and I went to, to Anchorage, and I saw Bill Borland, and he sent me over to see Bob Reeves, and Bob Reeves hired me, and he wanted me to fly co-pilot with, with Swede in the Sikorsky flying boat. And uh, I came up to Fairbanks to see my wife, my, see Renee, and I didn't tell you about meeting her in, in Lockheed, but I'll have to. But anyway, uh, and I went, we went downtown, and I'd flown a, a Grumman Widgeon for Jim McGoffin uh, in, 55 while I was in Seattle, that one that he bought, and he he knew I had big single engine float plane time, and he had he had bought two uh, Norsemans for Blanky Rice, well, 725 Easy and 651, and 725 Easy was out here in in on display for years and years, and uh, it got put in a building, and the roof collapsed in that building, and the airplane is back in one piece in, in Anchorage, but it's kind of a shame that 725 Easy isn't here. Uh, I was